Hello guys, welcome back and hopefully you can see that I have made another step forward. I have managed to connect my CAN adapter uh, device filter thingy to my Freelander. As you can see I have a cable which is going through the door round and down and into this um, little connector here and that goes into my MCP2515 CAN adapter which goes into my UNO, which goes into my laptop which goes into my CAN hacker software and as you can see we are getting CAN now my understanding of how this works <laughs> is, is vague at best but my understanding is that the ID is the device which is sending out the CAN data. This number is the number of uh, bytes that are included in this particular in each particular piece of CAN uh, data and these are the this is the data that's actually being sent and received. Now I don't know what any of them mean yet. I have no idea what they are yet. But I'm hoping to get it sorted out. I'm hoping to uh, figure all that out. Um, I presume that some of this is going to be wheel speed. I'm not sure which one it is. One of them will be wheel speed. Um, one of them will be for the throttle position. One of them will be RPM. That sort of stuff. I think that's what it is anyway. I'll come back and update whenever I figure out a bit more about what I've got, but this is all of the CAN data I am receiving that's uh, coming from the ECU itself. Um, there may be other CAN buses in the car. I don't think there's very much CAN in this car. It's a 2004 Land Rover Freelander. It won't have a whole lot in it. Um, so this this is probably everything, but that still has to be confirmed. But anyway, we're getting somewhere, we're making progress, and we're managing to read the CAN data from an old Land Rover Freelander. And that's a step I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to achieve. So here's hoping um, we'll be able to figure out what all these things mean. Anyway. That's just a quick update on where we're at and hopefully the next time we come back we'll be telling you what each of these different things mean or at least enough of them to enable me to uh, figure out how to put out uh, warning lights in the dashboard. Hi guys and welcome back to my Freelander to uh, a very wet and rainy evening. You can probably hear the rain on the roof and Welcome back to a little bit more information than I had the last time I uh, was out in this car. Since then, a very kind chap has sent me this information. And it appears that this is mostly correct, or at least what I've been able to look at uh, and test is correct so far. I um, haven't been able to check all of the things, but it looks like the throttle position is indeed 329 and is it 329 it says? Yep. And RPM looks like it is 316. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the ignition. Yep. My left hand if I can. Okay, ignition on. And now if we look at what we said was 329, I'm going to scroll up, zoom in because it's easier, easier for me to hold. Okay, so look at 329, and if I put my foot on the accelerator, you can see one of those is changing. Now, what it is, if you look, if you keep an eye on which one is it? Sorry, that one there. Currently at zero. 
If I start to put my foot on the accelerator, it goes up all the way to FE. And when I take my foot off the accelerator, it falls back down again. So that is the throttle position. I don't have the engine running at the minute so that you can see that by itself. Now why this is bouncing around like crazy I have no idea. I have to figure that one out yet. But this is definitely throttle position. How cool is that? <laughs> so next thing, I'll start the car. Try to start the car. Old diesels and all that. So the next one was RPM, which is 316, which is here. So if we watch that, I'm sure you can hear the car revving. Funny thing is, this digit, when I lift my foot off the accelerator and the uh, RPM is falling, that goes to zero. The other ones just do what they do. Because they're changing that quickly at the moment, I can't really see what they're doing or what they're going to. But that appears to be the uh, RPM. And... Right. I'm going to try and hold you while I move the car back and forward to see if the 1F0 for wheel speed Sorry about this, for wheel speed and see if that works. So tell me if it works because I can't see it at the minute because I'm too busy trying not to crash. Take the handbrake off. Yep, it was doing stuff. I saw it. You can't tell me it didn't. I saw it. I took a peek while the car was still moving. Yep, definitely. One of zero is wheel speed. So that's good. Basically what that means is that those figures were given to me by a chap who said those looked like the same from an E46 BMW. And funny old thing, they are the same as an E46 BMW because it has the same engine. And the Freelanders at the time when this was uh, being set up were being built by BMW. They were owned by BMW at that time. The other thing to note is I have, just for completeness, connected it through the Arduino Nano with the MCP2515 adapter. That tape is just to stop the cable from breaking, which it has a nasty habit of doing. So that's how I'm collecting the data at the moment through this. And as you can see, I just have the cable coming directly in from through the door. And if you can see there, I sit coming under the bonnet. It's not, it's not focusing very well. It's just going straight through from under the bonnet and in the door because it is pedaling down we're in here. So, so there we go. We have correct information coming from one of our friends on the internet. Yeah, who believe you could believe something that you hear on the internet? Uh, this is a guy on the Open Inverter uh, forum who sent me this information. And there it is again. If you want to take a note of it, those are the details. And they work. At least I've been able to confirm what three of them now. Um, so we're making once again, making baby steps, how we actually control this and so on, how we send information to clear uh, fault codes in the dash, all of that still has to be worked out. But I'm hoping that in this car, because it's so old, there won't be that many CAN signals to send. It'll be, the likes of the ABS will probably just look after itself. I don't think it'll care too much whether it's connected to the uh, can system or not. Um, things like 
uh, sorry, it, it may affect that little button, which is the hill descent control. But since that button has never been pushed since this car was bought, I'm not too worried about that. Um, other things like these stuff from the, the dash, to and from the dash, I have to figure all that out. I'm not even sure what it means, to be honest. But we're getting something. We're getting somewhere. Learning stuff and yeah, I think there's a very steep learning curve in this whole thing, but we're getting there. And uh, hopefully next time we are back, we'll have a few more of these things sorted out and diagnosed and uh, figured out how we're gonna, what we're gonna do with them. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.